Hi, in a previous main channel video, we took a look at waveform update rates on the new Tektronix uh, 2 series scope and compared it with uh, various other brands. And as it turns out, the uh, 2 series uh, scope is, well, we just captured one then. Uh, the 2 series scope is not that great. It's actually very poor in its waveform updates per second. This is why we're up to heart. Oh, there we go, just got it. What we're got is we're feeding a signal that has a glitch there on it and you can see it pop up occasionally and this is basically based on the statistical chance of it happening because it's got uh, the number of waveforms per second that it's actually capturing up here and you can see it's probably doing uh, 200, 300, 500, it's probably doing, you know, a couple of hundred waveforms per second. So it's set at this particular time base, this particular memory depth that varies, currently doing a couple of hundred samples per second. And we've got a uh, signal that has a, what's called a frequent glitch. I'm actually using uh, Tektronix's own uh, demo board and it's got frequent anomaly. Um, it's actually called on there, Frequent an Anomaly. We can switch it over to the Rare Anomaly. I don't actually know how frequently it actually uh, happens, but anyway, you might be able to get some... Is there a data sheet for that board? I don't think so. Um, but anyway, we've got an anomaly on here, and it pops up occasionally. If you use another scope like this uh, Keysight with the Mega Zoom 4 uh, ASIC, it just shows up all the time right <laughs> our glitch is there it's just going to capture it because this does a million waveform updates per second or less um, at this particular time base but anyway it's like orders of magnitude higher than the uh, tech scope so it shows up all the time anyway thank you to Steve Herkham on uh, Twitter for asking this which prompted this video can I actually do this test on an analog oscilloscope well you bet I can I've got the fluke uh, combi scope here this is actually analog and digital but we're currently in um, analog uh, see there's digital mode there. We're currently in analog mode, so it's an analog scope, okay? Really nice analog scope. And we can plug this in and like, can we see it? And the answer is, eh, not really. And why is that the case? It's like analog oscilloscopes are famous for showing the real waveform. And so, you know, you would think that we can actually see this thing because it's sampling all the time. Well, there's a brief period where it sweeps, where the trace actually sweeps back like this. But generally, it's just rewriting that screen all the time. We should be able to see it, right? Unfortunately, or fortunately perhaps, um, this is the one example that actually shows up the benefits of digital oscilloscopes over analog scopes and this one of this frequent um, or infrequent glitching um, stuff is going to do it because on an analog uh, scope the intensity of the display here depends on how many times uh, the photons actually hit the front surface and actually uh, emit light out of it. So if you've got a very infrequent glitch that's only happening one in a thousand, one in ten thousand sweeps uh, across, for example, yeah, it's going to capture it and it's going to put it on the screen, but if it doesn't stay there long enough or happen frequently enough um, in order to excite the phosphors that you can actually see, then, well, you're just not going to see it. And if I turn the trace intensity right up, right up. Don't know if you can see that, don't know if it's going to show up on the camera, but I can see just something in there. Maybe I'll turn out the lights. Hang on. Oh, can we see that now? Maybe? There, you can just see the little runt pulse in there. But, oh geez, like, no, <laughs> you would totally miss this in normal operation. You just wouldn't see anything. Now, if we put this back on the Tech Series 2 scope, there is actually a way that we can actually show this more frequently, and that's to turn persistence mode on. Okay, peak detect, we can do that. There we go, it might show it more frequently. There you go, peak detect. Oh no, 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 that was just a coincidence. Peak detect, it's still not gonna do it. We need persistence, where is it? It took me a while to find this. It's, you double tap on there and we get waveform view. Anyway, now we can set persistence. At the moment, it's, you can see it's set to auto. So uh, this is what I discussed in the other video in that um, uh, what happens, right? If you've, let's say your oscilloscope has a million waveform updates per second, like that one down there, right? That doesn't mean that your waveform on the screen, that doesn't mean your screen is updating a million times per second. It's, it's clearly not, okay? It's, I don't know how frequently a screen 
screen refreshes on these scopes because that's not a spec that they actually uh, tell you. But what they do is uh, they take the million waveforms per second and then they sort of like combine those together to give you a screen update. That's why even though that glitch might only appear one in every thousand uh, Sand waveform captures, it's going to display it there for a brief period of time just so that you can see it. But you can actually override this by having either variable uh, persistence where you can set a time period or you can have infinite. So let's just do infinite like this and you'll see that it'll just stay there like that, okay? So if we refresh that, we have to wait for it to happen, wait for it to happen, wait for it to happen, but if it happens once, boom! There we go, and it stays there, and your waveforms will build up. So uh, using persistence mode, maybe I've done a video on this, have I? I don't know. <laughs> maybe this video is the persistence mode video. Um, but here's where you can use persistent mode. If you think there's something happening with your signal now, you can see we've captured a bit of jitter on here, but this could be just a trigger jitter or something like that, right? So this is just gonna slowly build up and it won't override the screen unless you manually reset it or you change the scale or something like that. And this is a valuable way that even if you've got a slow waveform updating scope like this uh, Tektronix 2 series, even if you know the number of waveforms per second is slow, you can still turn on that persistence mode and just sit there and twiddle your thumbs and wait and wait and wait and see if something happens. Uh, but like I said before, for. It is a statistical thing. Um, if you've got a, if this one's only capturing a couple of hundred waveforms per second and another scope's capturing a couple of hundred thousand waveforms per second, you stand a better statistical chance of finding that uh, waveform. So you can think of this as like uh, two levels here. One is the, the waveform updates per second is important because you want to capture that signal. If you've got a slow enough update rate, then uh, you may never capture, it could take a huge long period of time uh, that you might wait for a while and uh, I don't see anything, so you know, there's nothing wrong there. But it's, the problem is you don't have a fast enough waveform update rate to actually capture that. And then the next separate layer to that is really how the scope actually takes uh, those waveform captures, because it captures, this is like, there it is there, you can see it counting up there, right? It's a couple of hundred waveforms per second, okay? And it could be a cut this one has a maximum of 1400. I actually measured it on the uh, previous one, but it has a burst rate of up to 18,000 waveforms uh, per second, but there's lots of dead periods. You have to watch the previous video for that, won't go over it again. But if your scope doesn't have a fast enough waveform capture rate to actually capture the signal to begin with, you're never going to see it on the screen. But there is that second layer where you can uh, include persistence on there or either infinite or variable. And if we actually take it back to variable, we can actually see that at 500 milliseconds, let's set it for say, I don't know, 10 seconds. Something like that, I've got to do seconds. How do I do 10 seconds? There we go. And bingo, right? So we'll, we'll capture that and it'll stay there for 10 seconds and I've got to keep talking for 10 seconds and then it will eventually clear and then start again. Um, 10 seconds is too long. Oh, come on, Dave. What'd you pick that for? Come on, it should go should go. I've been talking for longer than 10 seconds. Hey, why isn't that working? That should bugger off. That should bugger off after 10 seconds. Why doesn't that work? Let's try two seconds. Variable persistence. Okay? It should. It should clear. Yeah, there we go. It just cleared itself. Yep. It just cleared itself up too, so I don't know what was happening with the 10 seconds there. But yeah, see, it clears itself and then it stays on there long enough so that you can capture it. So that's a valuable technique. It's just to set, you know, not necessarily, inf infinite's really good because if you, like, you can leave the thing running overnight. I've done this many times uh, to capture intermittent faults. You leave your scope hooked up running overnight, you know something's wrong there, you know. You've got the heebie-jeebies. You know something's going to happen, but it's so infrequent. You leave your scope running overnight and uh, then you come back the next morning and if you've got infinite persistence, bing, you're going to see your runt pulse or whatever glitch or whatever problem um, that you actually, or your clock missed or something, you know. And you can actually see that by using infinite persistence on there. So you can just leave it running for days, weeks, months if you want. Uh, to find an intermittent problem. But the faster the update rate, the more possibility every second you have to capture that glitch. If, if you've only got 100 waveforms per second capture and then another scope has, uh, you know, 100,000, then you stand a better chance of getting it, <laughs> better statistical probability of capturing it with the 100,000 
uh, waveforms per second. So there you go. And this is something that we can't do on an analog oscilloscope because analog oscilloscopes have a natural persistence, so to speak, in that, uh, you know, you light up the phosphor, you know, you shoot, you shoot, the electron beam shoots and lights up the phosphor, and then it does actually stay there for a period of time before it decays. But uh, if you've got like a really um, infrequent uh, glitch like we've uh, got here, then, uh, you know, it, it only pops up like one every, every thousand sweeps and it, it's there for a millisecond. You, you know, you're barely going to see it. And as you saw here, we could barely see that thing, right? And I've got to turn the trace up. I'm burning my screen. And I can barely, barely see that sucker down in there. There it is, but you know, you would you would totally miss that. When the only reason I'm looking for it is because I know it's there. But yeah, there's nothing you can do better than that on an analog scope except turn up your uh, in intensity like this, which effectively increases your persistence time. But there's a certain limit to how much you can do that. So yeah, that's the huge advantage of digital scopes, even um, slow ones in quote marks like this uh, Tektronix 2 series. It's not slow in operation, as I said, it's just slow in the number of waveform updates per second. But even uh, in this particular case, no, this is <laughs> an infinitely better tool than our analog scope. And that's a really good example. So thanks for uh, recommending that. If you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up and as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.